One more time. Hakuna, 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 Lina Lom Shinda. Yote, Yote, Wana Yesu, Wana Weza, Liwa Toa Jasho Makuhani, Awa One more time. Hakuna, 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 Lina Lom Shinda. Now we can do it more confident now. Hakuna, 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 Lina Lom Shinda. Yote wana Yesu wana weza ni watu wa jasho makuhani. Now I say, Hakuna, 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 Lina Lom Shinda. One final time. a true saying. We have just sung that there is nothing that is impossible to our God. Yes, and that's the God that we want to talk about this morning. Thank you, worship team. Now you may be seated. Poleni sana siku wapea. Heads up on that, but uh, anyway, you're here. Buona asifiwe sana. Asuma buona asifiwe. Kama unaniona, unipungie mkono wako. Najua kuna wale ambao muna tuona, lakini muko kwa tent. Tupungiane mkono watu wa tent. Thank you those that are on the corridors. Nipungie mkono kama unaniona kwa screen. Najua kuna screen mahali. Na wale ambao muko nyumbani, buwana asifiwe. We are coming to you from this year KZ. And we bless the Lord for giving us this moment just to share God's word. To come and just hear what the Lord wants um, us to learn. Before we go into the notes and, you know, I'm going to give three points. Three service, uh, three, three point summon, <laughs> uh, and then we'll be done. But allow me to say this. Um, I know all of us, in one time or another, we have interacted or we came into contact um, with a teacher. If you haven't, it's because you're thinking the teacher is the one who sits in a classroom. Because I know in life, you will have a teacher, either formal or informal. You either go to school formally or informally. Amen? And I perceive that maybe or most of us might have gone to, to, to a class. And I also know that one of the most significant persons in our lives, apart from our parents and our guardians, the other significant person is the teacher. You believe it? You agree? Okay, if you don't agree, it's okay. Maybe along the way we shall agree. Now, those of us who have kids, by the grace of God, do you know that there was a time that your kids started, started telling you that the teacher has said? Nani aliambiwa hivo? Na watoto wako? Na wendi ulilipa school fees na ukapeleka kwa hiyo shule? Alafu wanakuambia teacher said. You, you already have gotten into a, a, a discussion because what you're telling them and what teacher said is like, hmm, how you is Anna, mom how elewi, dad how elewi, but there is a teacher. Now that teacher, you might not even have known their names, but teacher Alisema. Hello? Now I want us to talk about that teacher. Now some of us went to school when teachers were real teachers. They were teachers and, and yes, the education was important. I'm not saying that it's not important now. And even before you go there, even those of us who have... Uh, Received some training or another, and I know there are people who have a problem. Daktari yuko hapa, naona daktari hapa, and daktari is my friend. We are working together in many other places. There are people, because of the education they have received, if you do not address them as Dr. Kiroko, wanaenda nyumbani wakiwa na shida mingi, wanaumu na tumbo, wanapato na mambo mingi ambayo, because we call them by their name and not by their title. Now, I, I, 
I respect every doctor, I respect every professor, and I know it is hard work. I am not saying it is bad to become a doctor. But the problem that that kind of a person has is because they sat in class and they were taught by a teacher, they acquired the doctorate or they acquired whatever title. The teacher is very important in their life so that if you, don't know, if you do not address them by their title, then there is a problem. The problem is because they sat under a teacher and they became a doctor, they became a professor, they became whatever else. They became an engineer. They became, you know, those, those titles. And they are good. One of these days, I pray <laughs> that I'll be called doctor. Dr. David Kibera. <laughs> but it is work, isn't it? So we respect doctors. We respect all of you who have titles because you went to class. But I want to say this. That title you got because you sat under somebody. They instructed you. Isn't it? Bwana QS, ni kweli. And as teachers, and they instructed you hours on end. Uh, that teacher is important. Now, some of us, the teacher said something to us. And up to today, we are struggling with what the teacher said. We have not become what God would have wanted us to become because the teacher said. You know, those teachers then, when we went to school, they would call us all sorts of names. I remember there was one that was uh, in our high school. I'm looking for the one who was a bit modest and, uh, because we were called all sorts of names by teacher. And teachers are on, an authority. And he would call us goats. Can you imagine? Sisi Watoto, our mama to Mepeleko High School, we, we meet a teacher who would call us goats. And all of us were goats. In that class, he called us good goats and bad goats. So, it's not like when you are, you are better than the other, you, you had another. You are a good goat if you are a good boy. If you are a bad boy, you are a bad goat. I remember, and I cannot forget their names. And I know you have a teacher that you remember to, to date. Refresh your memory, go back to high school, go back to primary school. Kuna mwalimu alikuita jina flani? Ah, ama ni mini nikuona samea hizo shule. Waliitana majina kama gani, ulitua jina gani. Usiseme hile mbaya sana, hile mbaya unaona, hiyo aliniita siyo kweli. Lakini usiseme hile mbaya sana. Let me hear, what, what names did they call us? Ngombe. Can you imagine? Umeenda shule. <laughs> Mwani mwana kuangalia hivya naona ukona migumi ine, ukona mutingoes, and akuita ngombe. Mutingoes is a tail. Watu wa balcony, mulito wa majina, na walimu. Hello? Let me hear those, those names. In church we talk. Yes? Mosquito brain. Imagine. Ti wewe na mosquito in. Wewe kazi yako ni kusambaza malaria. Wewe ni mosquito brain. Yes? What else? Eh? They called us all sorts of names. But we forgive them. Because we were not ngombe, we, was, we were not goats, we were not mosquito brain, because we are created in the image and likeness of God. Now, having known that that teacher is an important person in your life, having known that some of us have a problem because if we do not address us by the titles, and be, they got the titles because they sat under a teacher and then conferred upon them that now you are a doctor, having known that we had teachers who didn't regard God and that's why they didn't see us, in the lenses of God, we come to a place where we have a master teacher. And his name is Jesus. He is not the one who called himself a master teacher. And, 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 and he, he was referred to by people, not because he went to a school and he became a professor, not because he went to a college and earned a degree, He's a master teacher because he taught the things of God. Hello? Now, the master teacher has said a lot of things concerning you. And if for a moment, if you just do 25% of believing what the master teacher has said, like you have believed that other teacher, your life will be changed. If you would believe what Jesus Christ says about you, and I'm not saying, we have an opportunity to believe everything that he says about us. It is you who will make the choice. 
It is me who makes the choice. But if we believed 25%, 25%, my teacher told me is a quarter. I am referring to my teacher. I got it from the teacher. It's a quarter. If I believed a quarter of what the Lord says about me, of what the master teacher says about me, my life would be different. Now, Jesus is, is, is referred to as... Uh, um, before, before I get to that, the dictionary, uh, KJV dictionary, um, tells us that a teacher is one who teaches or instructs. He teaches or instructs. An instructor or a tutor, an instructor, a tutor, a teacher, is one whose business or occupation is to instruct others. And you could be an instructor in many fields. One of the fields you could be an instructor in would be in the field of religion, for example. A preacher is a minister of the gospel. A preacher is a teacher of the word. A teacher will not need to be ordained to teach. A teacher instructs. A teacher gives instructions. A teacher does what he needs or she needs the people who are coming after him or her to do. And so that is a teacher. In uh, the Hebrew uh, language, Jesus was referred to as the rabbi. Have you heard that term rabbi? It's just Hebrew, which is a language. They called Jesus by that title, rabbi. And the other day, I remember we were talking about, you know, some of us who have a problem because when we go to a place and we do not understand the language of the people, we think we are lesser than them. That if people spoke English and I'm not speaking English, I'm thinking I am inferior. Jesus spoke Hebrew and Aramaic, not English. And as a Jew, he was referred to as a teacher who is a rabbi. Now, a rabbi is a person who was qualified by academic studies. We do not see anywhere where Jesus went to class. But if you went to a Jew today and asked them who a rabbi is, they will tell you it's somebody who has qualified by academic studies of Hebrew and the stories or the records of the Torah, the first five books of the Bible. They are qualified in those studies. They have been proven. They sit and instruct people on what the Torah says. He is a leader. He is a teacher. He is an instructor of the Jewish community. Now, that is what they call Jesus. Now, having said that, I know in the scriptures there are a lot, a lot of references that call Jesus teacher. We also know him by many other words, but today I want us to zero in on the teacher. He is our Lord, he's our savior, he's a master, he's a redeemer, but he is also our teacher. In the gospels, Jesus is addressed more than 60 times as a teacher. And this is a word, this is a term that the people that he interacted with called him. They referred to him as a teacher. This is also how the disciples referred to him. Jesus himself used the term when he said, you call me teacher and Lord, rightly so. So he agrees. For that is what I am in John chapter 13 and verse number 13. When Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night, he said, we know that you are a teacher. And he says this, who has come from God. John chapter 3 and verse number 2. Now, having said that, and hopefully, I have underscored the importance of a teacher in our lives. And we will need teachers then, 
We will need them now. Some of us are teachers. You will become a teacher, whether formally or informally, to somebody. Then we need to listen to the master teacher. Now, the master teacher displays the following things. And he said, or rather we were saying, if you want to succeed then, these are not optionals. Jesus comes into the, in, into the scene, and one of the qualifications that we see about Jesus is that he was a powerful teacher. So, we would rightly say that Jesus taught with power. Now, Jesus taught with power, not because of how much he shouted. We have just sang, he went into the synagogue. <laughs> if, if that song was not just for us to enjoy, if you, if you listen into the words, we have said, Hakuna linalo mshinda. Aliwatoa jasho makuhani na wazehe kaluni. In the synagogue where they would, they, they would, they would uh, teach the, 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 the word, if you would want, the scroll was taught in the synagogue. The law was taught in the synagogue. He went in there as a small boy, 12 years old. And he was there. And he really made them sweat. He would answer questions. And they were surprised. How come this young boy, how come this small boy knows so much? It is because he was speaking what was from God. Scripture says in John 3, 2. He was teaching because he had come from God. Now, Jesus taught with power. As he teaches with power, what comes out of this teacher is the fact that he was submitted. We see submission as Jesus uh, brings up uh, his teachings with a lot of power. Because he depended on the Father. So he taught with power because he dependent on the Father. It is recorded in scripture that many times Jesus went to pray. His source or his, his, his being a powerful teacher came from the fact that he was able to go and have time in prayer. I know we do a lot of things and many of us are involved in many things, but I want to suggest for you to become a person who has power, for you to become a teacher who has power, there is no substitute to prayer. Whether you are a business person, whether you are a teacher like we are saying, in whatever occupation that you are in, for you to become powerful in that area, for you to become an authority in that area, the place of prayer is number one. And Jesus demonstrates this to us. Give us Luke chapter number 5 and verse number 16. Luke 5 and verse number 16. This is what scripture says. But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Jesus withdrew to lonely places. He says often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. I don't know how many of us would say that before I, I, I get involved in, a, in, a, in, in an, an enterprise, so before I do something, I withdraw and pray about it. How many of us would say that this can be said of me? Now, Jesus being the son of God, shall we say, Jesus being God himself, shows us a lot of submission for him to become a teacher who taught with power. He depended on God. He kept on going back to that place of prayer. He made prayer a priority. He had purpose in praying. His disciples learned from him the value of prayer. Luke chapter number 11 and verse number 1. This is what scripture says. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. Just as John taught his disciples. Now, the disciples have seen how important prayer was to Jesus, who was God, and he was depending on the Father through prayer. And they get to a point where they say, teach us how to pray. And I want to submit to us, prayer. If you're going to become an authority in the place, in the area that God has stationed you, in whatever it is that you're doing, then prayer is not a substitute. Point number two.
His character was exemplary. His character as a teacher was an example. Jesus taught with his life being an example. He went to people, they looked at him, how he behaved, what he did, and he became an example. Now, the problem that we have nowadays is that we have teachers whose words and what they do are different. No wonder then we would have a problem with where we are coming from. The teachers who called us all sorts of names, we know, we knew. You, you don't mean anything that you say. The things that they told us, they never meant them. If we are going to become an authority, if we are going to excel in whatever place that we, we, we are in, we must be like Jesus who taught with his life. And so he becomes an example through his life. In the book of Philippians chapter number 2 and verse number 7, this is what scripture says about Jesus. Uh, let's start from uh, verse number 6 so that we pick it up from there. Verse number 6, Philippians 2 and verse says this about Jesus who being in every nature God did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he says, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness. Now this is Jesus with his life knowing that he was God, he disregards all that and takes upon himself humanity. Why did he do this? He does this so that you and I can, 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 can get to a place where we can identify with him because and, and I know we hear this a lot. You know, Jesus was able to, to overcome all the things that he overcame because he was God. True, yes. But the truth is, through this scripture, Jesus got to a place where he emptied himself of godliness so that he would go through what we go through as human beings. Now, I know this is, this is a teaching that has a lot of questions in many places. How was it possible? How was it then God would empty himself? What was it that he was emptying himself of? But the truth is, he became everything human, 100%, so that he could go through what we go through, and he came out victorious. Scripture says that he went through this life without sin. So, in, in, in being an example, he illustrates selflessness. He illustrates servanthood. God becomes man and serves human beings. He goes to the place of a servant and he serves the people. Scripture says in Mark chapter number 10 and verse number 45. Mark chapter 10 and verse number 45. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus didn't come to be served. As God, he came and gave his life as a ransom for all of us. Now, when, when a ransom is given for your life, it's simply because you are out there, you are lost, something has been given for an exchange or in exchange to you. It is important for us to realize that we were lost. Without Jesus, there was no hope. Without the master teacher, there was no hope. And then he comes, asks God, but empties himself of godliness, humbles himself, he's selfless, he becomes a servant, serves us, and brings us to a place where he dies for us so that we may be found alive. And so he gives his life as a ransom for many. The many include you and I. Jesus is also recorded as saying in Mark chapter 10 and verse number 44 to 45, just what we have alluded to. Whoever wants to be, if you have it, and whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, 
but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. If you want to be first, if you want to be number one, if you want to be above, you must go down. You must be a slave. You must be a servant uh, so that you can go up. It says in uh, John chapter number 15 and verse number 13, John 15 and 13, greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. This is what Jesus does. There is no greater love than this, that he lays down his life for his friends. Jesus did not just teach in selflessness and in servanthood, he laid down his life for his students or for his disciples, if you want. So he did not merely do the teaching, he did it with his life. He became the example. It was not just the theory, there was the practical bit of it, which is what he did. Now, at that point then, it becomes very hard for us to be teachers. And therefore, we can rightly say, none of us qualifies to be a master teacher, apart from Jesus himself. Because the teacher teaches, and with his life, he gives examples. We're talking about loving one another. He will love. He loved us to the point of giving his life for us. As a teacher, we teach. But what is the example that we give to the student? Master teacher. His life became an example. Now, if you think about Jesus being God, and then being an example of what you and I ought to be, then you realize that we have, we, have, we have a great teacher who decided that yes, with all the power, with all the, the ability, with all the whatever it is that you would want, that you would lay that aside. Now, I don't know how many of us are able to do that. Many instances when you go to places, um, in, in the second service, Bishop was talking about how, how, you know, humility will take you to a place of honor, among other things. You go to places, and this is not just for the people out there, but even Christians, because we want to be honored, but we want to be honored, and we don't want to be an example. We don't want to be humble. And so it is not unusual for you to go to places, and you see people fighting for recognition. You see people, you know, pushing to be in the front seat. Just what I alluded to, the fact that you want to be recognized as so and so is because within you, there is something that you have not learned. There is something that you have not exemplified. You, you meet somebody who is so highly... Um, placed in society, but you interact with them like an ordinary Kenyan, an ordinary human being, and then you have an occasion to go and meet them in their official capacity. And you realize, wow, wow. Bonacius, <laughs> allow me to give you an example. Thank you. <laughs> this man here. Maybe many don't know him. And my sermon is about <laughs> the master teacher, not about him. <laughs> I walked to his office. And that is not the office that he has now. So I walk into that building and I say, I want to see so and so. And they look at me. And like, you? You want to see who? I say, yes, I want to see this man. He's in this building. Unless I'm not getting things right. I say, okay. And things happen. And from that point, I can tell there's something that is unusual. Why are you behaving this way? I'm just a human being. Oh, little did I know that it is a person who I was going to see that was causing all this to happen. 
You know that story of, 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 of the elephant and uh, is it the frog or the whatever? And they are crossing the bridge. And they shake the bridge. They get to the other side. Say, Unaona vya tumetingiza hiyo daraja. That was me. So, I'm quickly ushered into some place. The lift I'm using is different. Hakuna msongamano wa atu. Ikona carpet is red. I'm like, am I going to the right place? Because the person I have seen and the treatment I'm getting, I had not seen this in him. Now, some of us, some of us, we were ni mwalimu wa primary. And in your village, people cannot have peace. Simply because you are in an academy. Ati wewe siyo wa serikali shule. Academy. Wewe ni mwalimu. Kwanza wa ECD. So, you tell me, when you experience this kind of a treatment, what happens to me after I meet that man? I'm like, you are so humble. Some of us cannot handle that. And maybe that's why we are where we are, because God is at work. God is working on us. It's something that you have not been, because people know you. What you do, you have to do with the company, section, department, flani. There are people who are let it not be said of you that in the plot that you live because you have a jalopy in a car yani watu huko kwa plot umeona vijana ambao wananunua subaru na subaru ni gari nzuri ushaona ah unajua subaru <laughs> subaru is a make of a car iko na sauti na iko na miondoko yake now, the young people who have Subarus, they don't give us peace. They even have a Subaru team something. When they overtake you on the road, you think they're not going to Kenya. They are going past Kenya and beyond. <laughs> Subaru team, guys, if you're listening, please give us peace. <laughs> you forget that there are other people who are driving cars that you climb into. Like, you know, to begin a kelele, alam za magari zote za estate zinanza kuria kwa sababu kona Subaru. Subaru Leon, kwanza ni Leon, umeweka, umeweka hizo sauti, inapika kelele. Please, just be humble. Let your life be an example. People will listen to you when they see the example, and not because of what you will say about yourself. You and the life that you live needs to be congruent. That is what Jesus did, and he did it for us. <laughs> no wonder we are found today. The long and short is, I went to his office. And in his office, <laughs> I was mesmerized the more. I go in there and I'm wondering, this office is yours, all alone. It's like a whole class. So, and it's carpeted from... <laughs> and I know the others who are here, maybe if you invited me to your office, I'll talk about you next time, but because you're humble, <laughs> we, we don't have... We, we don't get to know. But I'm saying, I got into that office and I was like, <laughs> this is a good life. Oh. <laughs> I am wondering if it was me. <laughs> what? <laughs> ah, what? <laughs> and I know even you. <laughs> but we thank God that this is what Jesus exemplifies with a lot of power. Not, not a lot of power, with all the power. Can you imagine? The soldiers take Jesus to the cross and he's like, it's okay. And every time I think about this, for those of us that have gone to the encounter, the picture that comes into mind is when they are putting Jesus on the cross. Well, it's, it's, it's acted, but Jesus dying was not acting. It was real. Now, these are just trying to bring to us, you know, a bit of what they think happened. And after he's beaten and disfigured and he's messed up, he's bloody, he has a crown of thorns, and many things have been done to him, he's beaten until some of us start crying. Tunona ye movie tunalia. Because they have acted what they think happened. Because they never captured it. And there is that part when, you know, they are pulling his hand so that it can be nailed. And all of us are saying, no. Tunakatana, eh. Tunasema usilete mkono. Usilete. And he's like, there. You see? That hand goes like this. And they are pulling. And the men who are pulling are built men. And they have been eating, waiting for this act. And this beaten, 
famished, punished, broken man, they cannot put that hand to where it needs to go. And finally, he does like, that's the power I see in Jesus. That he could leave all that glory, all that power, all that ability that was in him, and he allows himself to go to the cross. The master teacher has given us an example of what life needs to be. Now, that is the person that has given his life for you. Be challenged if you are here and you are a village elder, and people have no peace. Be challenged if you are here and in your house there is, you know, this home theater. You are in. It is just, and it is a Panasonic make. It's not even the best. Lakini kelele unapigia watu kwa plot. Wewe ambayo unaendesha hiyo subaru. Unatupigia kelele huku watu na amani. Be, be, look at Jesus. He had all the power. He had everything that human beings would want to have. Yet he humbled himself. He gave us the example. The master teacher exemplified that. Very fast, let me go to my last point. Point number three. His method of teaching makes him not just a great teacher, but the master teacher. Jesus taught, and in many of his teachings, he uses stories and parables. And a parable is a story that is told to illustrate a certain, uh, or to bring out a certain message. Matthew chapter number 13, verse 34 to 35, if you would give us that for a moment. This is what scripture says. Jesus spoke all these things to the crowd in parables. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. 35 says, So was fulfilled what was spoken through the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things hidden since the creation of the world. Now, Jesus spoke all these things. He didn't open his mouth just to speak. He opened his mouth and spoke in parables. He uttered words that had hidden meaning. And why was he doing this? It's so that when people would go back, they would regurgitate, they would sit, they would, they would as it were, chew the card, and as they were thinking what he was saying, then the message would come out. Now, a master teacher like Jesus, because there is no other, brought us all those stories that are bringing out the messages that are important in life. In many parables, uh, Jesus spoke um, about issues of life. And as he spoke, he was not the kind of um, teacher or minister who would come to the scene and just scare his audience. A lot of the teachings that Jesus gives, he gives around the place where people are or the community that he was in. And you would find in most of his stories, he, took, he talked about the sea, there was a boat, there was fish, there was, um, you know, all that happening. Why? It's because he wanted to get to the people and relate with them. The people around where Jesus is ministering at this time is around the seaside, is in Galilee, is around where the occupation there is fishing. For example, the people who are in Kisumu and those other places where they have the oceans and the seas, they would be understanding so much. And I don't know why they haven't gotten saved all of them. Because they should be relating with what Jesus was saying. Now, if he came to us, for example, the people from Mount Kenya, or to Mount Kenya, maybe Jesus would have spoken about donkeys as a mode of transport, about hills and valleys, about the cold that comes sometimes in the year. Or if he had come into us, uh, into our community here in Zimmerman and he's talking about food, <laughs> he would have been talking about maybe Motura, Motura Zima. The generation of today, pizza. So he took the things that people were doing and drew lessons of life. What is it that we are doing today? And what lessons can we learn? from what Jesus said, what Jesus spoke. So, in essence, he identified with the people. He never came and, 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 you know, scared the people off because of how knowledgeable he was. 
He was knowledgeable? Yes. Is he all-knowing? Yes. Did he scare people with his knowledge? Those who, 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 who chose to be scared were scared. But those who understood what he was saying got saved. Now, I know most of us preachers, because of just, you know, again, sitting under a teacher and you are taught a few words in Greek, it is not possible for you to speak to people without using Greek. Huh? Zoe. What one Zo? Zo who? Where did you learn that? Kenosis. Are you not being scared? Um, what other Greek do I know? <laughs> Utter your Greek message. It's, and we scare people with Greek. Nobody wants to know Greek. If you want to know Greek, go to school. But bring Jesus in the simple way that he came to us. He was the Lord of Lords. Then he came to us in a way that we understood him. Now, whatever it is that God has given you to do, how do you go to the people that you're bringing up? The people who have built houses. I have found very few. Who will tell you it is easy to build. Most of them will say, Please. Or you go to school and you know the truth is, you went to school, you struggled with school fees to get that degree. But the, the person who tells you, I want to go to college, and you're like, Uta, utaweza. Ata wewe haukwa unaweza. Ni mungu alikusaidia. Be simple. Encourage God's people. Be an example. Have all that power, but come down here. That will make sense. To the young people, we that are unmarried, we that are, did I say unmarried? We that are married, when we talk about marriages, how do we come to you? It's like this thing. Are you sure you are able? And, and, we ask, and you are struggling like this and you want to get married? Who will get married to you? The truth is, we were also there struggling the same. So, if there is something that you need to do, go to somebody who will bring out Jesus in a simple way. Whatever it is that you want to do, it is doable. The Lord has shown us. We can make it. We are human. We have limitations. But he exemplified that to us. And we are going to make it. If he made it, we will make it. With our flaws and challenges, yes, we will make it. I want to bring this to a close by saying this. Whatever it is that you have trusted the Lord for in this year, Oh, what is it that you are trusting God for this year? Is it a marriage partner? Is it that house? Is it that car? Is it a child even? Do not allow anybody to speak negative to you. Jesus had all the power, brought it down here. Whatever was so hard, whatever is so hard, there is nothing that is difficult with our Lord. It is being simple and in being simple we get the honor. It is in humbling ourselves that people honor us. So today when I deal with that man, I don't I, I am I'm a changed thinker. <laughs> as you deal with the Lord, as you believe what the Lord has said for you, be careful he is the master, he's the Lord, but he has allowed himself to come to this level. So we're not going to get familiar with him. We're not going to take him for granted. We will believe what he says about you and about me, and we will move, believing that we can do everything because there is nothing that is impossible with him. And that's the Lord who I present to us this morning. Master, teacher. There is nothing that he doesn't know. There is nothing that is impossible with him. There is nothing that he didn't go through as a human being that we are going through and he overcame everything. You can also overcome. I want to bring this to a close by asking, are you here and you have whatever issue it is? Whatever problem it is, you who is watching us from home or from wherever, 
What problem is that that you have? What issue is that that you're bringing before the Lord? He is well able to handle it. And now, as we bow our heads, I want to ask, are you here? All heads bowed? You haven't known Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. The truth is, it will be very, very hard for you. We begin there. And Jesus is not complicated. He is simple. He has come to us. Being God, he has allowed himself to come to this level so that we can commune with him. The master teacher is calling you. He has lessons for you. He has everything that you need. The curriculum of life is in him. Are you going to trust him with your life? And if you're here and you're, you're not born again, I want to ask if you'd lift up your hand. We'll see it. We'll commend you to this teacher. And I can guarantee you that things will be different. Are you here? You're not born again. We're not having a lot of time. I ask going once, are you here? You're not born again. The voice of the Lord is speaking to you. Refuse to listen to the enemy who is telling you this is not the time. This is the time for salvation. This is the time the teacher has come to you. And he wants you to get out of that school, out of that class that they are telling you it is hard, into his class. The class where he teaches you things about life and how you're going to do it. Are you there? If you lift up your hand, we'll pray together and we'll be ushered into the kingdom of God. Are you there asking for the last time? Now, if you're here and you have an issue you wanted to present before the Lord, as you lift up your hand, we're going to pray together over whatever issue it is. And the Lord is going to come through for us. If you're there, you have an issue, please lift up your hand. Those of us who are watching from home and from wherever, if you have whatever issue it is and you want to present it before the Lord, this is the moment. Believe together with us that it's going to happen because we are entrusting our lives to the master teacher. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you. We honor you for this moment that you have allowed us into this space. We thank you that you have come and brought the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, so highly lifted and thrown and exalted, yet you come to our level to just minister to us, show us that it is possible. I pray for our viewers, Lord, whatever issue it is that we could be struggling with, whatever project it is that is ahead of us. We have heard, we have listened to all kinds of teachers. The master teacher is saying, with his life, he has shown to us that it is possible. We can overcome the challenges that we are going through in life. With his life, there is nothing that is impossible. He is telling us to trust in him. And that's what we want to believe. That's what we want to do. And that's why we are lifting our hands to you. Father, we ask that in the name of Jesus, that it will please you, our Father, this afternoon to just come to this level this level of the people that you have created in your own likeness and image and sought us out. The kind of education, the kind of instruction, the kind of schooling that we want is that which is of the master teacher. We thank you and we honor you. We give you every praise because we pray this in Jesus' name.